Welcome to AgriTalk and thank you for keeping it Katie and Farmers TV. On today's conversation, we are talking about uh, meat handling and safety. And today in studio, we are with um, Dr. Salome Wanyuike, who is the principal uh, at the Kenya, at the, at the Meat Training Institute. Hope that is correct. That's correct. Welcome to the show. Thank okay. you. Uh, tell us a little bit about um, why is it important to have to handle our meat uh, in a safe way. Um, it is important to handle meat in a safe way because um, you are talking about human health, and uh, what goes in if it is not healthy mm -hmm. uh, then may cause uh, complications in the consumer, uh, and therefore the meat needs to be safe. Uh, you, when we talk about safety, we are talking about the absence of uh, what we call um, organisms of dis or disease agents. Mm. Uh, we are also talking about absence of chemicals. We are talking about uh, uh, absence of um, anything that really can cause uh, uh, complications in the consumer. Okay. So where can we put ourselves as a country? Where do we, how is our meat handling, uh, uh, how do we handle our meat? Is it in a safe way or from where you sit? Uh, I would say from where I sit actually, by and large we handle our meat uh, safely. Mm -hmm. uh, first of all, we have the laws that govern the handling of meat. Mm -hmm. We have the Meat Control Act. And this is the act that has created some institutions like the Meat Training Institute. Uh, it is also the law that uh, puts the, 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 the protocols, the regulations, the guidelines in place <laughs> on how to handle meat. So those are in place. Mm -hmm. And then we have uh, other processes that, um, that support the safe handling of meat. Uh, one of them is, of course, the awareness creation to the public. Okay on uh, what is in place to make sure that the, food, the, the meat that is uh, supplied to them mm -hmm. is safe. Okay. So they are aware and they can look out for this. Uh, then the other thing that uh, the government has done, uh, for example, is to put in place uh, officers that inspect meat. And when we talk about meat, it's not just meat. Uh, that is inspected. There are other foods that are inspected and the officers that inspect meat are also trained to handle other foods. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about milk, we are talking about honey, we are talking about, when we talk about meat, we actually kind of consider meat to be not just uh, beef, uh, but we are talking about chicken, we are talking about yeah, fish, we are talking about all these meats mm -hmm. uh, and uh, the, these persons are actually trained to handle that. Okay. So we have one institution, it's the only one of its type, which is the Meat Training Institute. Mm -hmm. We shall be talking about that later. Uh, but uh, it, ha it is actually uh, fully fledged to do this. Uh, it's a, actually the premier institution on pub veterinary public health, okay. where meat handling falls. Uh, the other thing that uh, the government has done is to uh, you know, the government is a regulator, so it will, uh, for example, inspect the facilities uh, that, that handle meat. We are talking about uh, slaughterhouses themselves. We are talking about, um, uh, we are talking about uh, butcheries, also inspected. We are also talking about uh, inspecting the outlets uh, for, for meat uh, sale. Mm -hmm. If you are talking about supermarkets, I do believe you remember the story of additives in, yes. me, in meat in supermarkets. Preservative and additives. Yeah, yeah. Conservat I mean preservatives and additives. Uh, and uh, now, when it comes to meat, because meat is handled by very many different people. Yes. They are the inspectors, but they are also those who prepare the meat for consumption by the general public. Uh, we have uh, those who cook the meat, there are those who roast the meat, there are those who so do, there are those who store the meat and all sorts of things. Mm -hmm. uh, there is some level of inspection here and there, but I dare say that the consumer is also uh, 
uh, has a stake in, in inspection. In this, yes. I mean, when you arrive at a butchery, for example, check, you know, whether the butchery is licensed. It's very easy to tell. Licenses are always displayed. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Uh, look at how they cook the meat, how they roast the meat. Is it in the way that you would like? Uh, that way you decide to buy the meat or not? Okay. How it is cut, how it is packaged, all this is important. Okay. Let, if, if I may ask, um, let's not, let, let me ask you this not as the principal of the Meat uh, Training Institute, just as a Kenyan. As you walk around do you st and you see the people handling meat, are you always comfortable that uh, the people handling meat out there are doing it the right way? No, I'm not always comfortable. Actually, there are, there, are, there are places where you look at it and you wish you were the regulator. Because mm -hmm. I cannot call myself, uh, neither is my institution a regulating institution. Mm -hmm. It is a training institution, but they are regulators. But uh, what I see uh, sometimes uh, is not correct. And uh, we actually do report some of these practices to the regulators so that they can, they can check. And uh, we are coming to the institution and what it does, mm -hmm. but this is the reason why we have uh, the courses that we have at the Meat Training Institute, mm -hmm. so that we would be able to train all these people handling meat how to handle meat correctly. Even as it is inspected, mm -hmm. now the next stage is what we call value addition. You know, so in that value addition, the meat arrives at the butchery and from there it is sold and all sorts of things. How it is handled, a lot of the times I find it not correct. And my desire always is I wish these people would come to the Meat Training Institute and get proper training on how to handle meat. Okay. Yes. Is it possible for you to paint a picture for us of what exactly is expected of those very same people you mentioned that? If there, there was an opportunity, we'll welcome them to come to the uh, Meat Training Institute to get some training. Uh, is there a way you can paint a picture for us on what it takes from the time the animals arrive at the abattoir to the time either goes to the shelf or it is, uh, or it is stored? Stored or even consumed? Yes, or even consumed. Yes, so uh, first of all we begin with what we call antemortem inspection of the animal. Once the animals arrive at the slaughterhouses, before they enter for slaughter, they're supposed to be inspected, antemortem. The reason being there are certain diseases that may be in the animals, mm -hmm. and these animals are therefore not fit for, for slaughter. So that's where we begin. Okay. Uh, then once that is done, and animals are seen to be fit for slaughter, then they enter now the the, 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 the slaughter process. And uh, this is where we begin with, uh, uh, because sometimes the animals are not, uh, they, they, they can be rather dirty, mm. so they, they can be uh, some level of washing, okay? Mm -hmm. To remove the, a lot of uh, maybe the debris, dirt and all that on the animals. And then there is uh, what we call stunning. And this is a welfare issue uh, because animals uh, are, are supposed to be handled humanely. Okay. So they are stunned, although there are some cultures that do not support stunning, uh, but they are stunned, and after stunning, uh, the slaughter begins. And uh, this we are talking about, of course, cutting the neck, we are having the removal of the, of the, of the hide, uh, we are having a splitting of the carcass, we are having a, a removal of the internal organs, and, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and uh, the, 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 when the carcass is ready now for inspection, this is when we have now the meat inspector come in and uh, inspect meat as is required. Okay. So before the meat inspector arrives, meat yeah. has to uh, inspections begin when the the animals arrive. That is what you, you antemortem. Uh, yes, antemortem. Antemortem. So there is someone who who inspect that part, and then there is someone who inspect for now the the carcass is ready for. Yes, and it may be the same person. Okay. Uh, the reason I'm saying this is because a meat inspector is first of all an animal health person. Okay. 
So they already know how the animal is supposed to look at, like when the animal is alive. And then when it is now slaughtered, that is post-mortem inspection, then they also know what is right and what is wrong. And that is not only on the carcass, we are talking about even internal organs. They also speak a lot about what could be happening to this animal. And uh, eventually, actually, uh, we have, you know, at inspection, the carcass could be accepted or it could be condemned. Yeah, and condemnation can be because, first of all, if the carcass is, uh, is, 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 is really emaciated, it's is, is not, is not uh, really fit uh, because it lacks the content that is, should be consumed by the human, uh, then it can be condemned in totality. But then there are certain other aspects that cause condemnation, sometimes parts of the carcass, mm -hmm. sometimes the entire carcass. Uh, so there, there are two, those two levels, yeah. Okay. Yes. Talking on the emaciation, yes. uh, I remember some time back when we had a very bad drought mm -hmm. and the government went around telling farmers and uh, pastoralists to deliver their cows at the Kenya Meat Commission. Some of them could not even stand. What was that meat really safe for us? Because it was still slaughtered. Yes, uh, w w what we need to understand is that uh, in, a, in, a, in a place like uh, KMC, uh, not all the meat that is slaughtered is for human consumption. Okay, okay. It's not meant for human okay. consumption. Yeah, okay. They have different levels. And uh, there is also meat that is fit for consumption as is. As, as you know, without processing or anything. Mm -hmm. But there is meat which can be processed, like canning, it, it's still okay. Because sometimes when we talk about emaciation, it's the aesthetics. You don't want to walk into a butchery and what you are seeing is yeah. a highly emaciated carcass. Yeah, so sometimes the canning does a good job, but then we also have products uh, like uh, meat and bone meal. And uh, you want uh, to make use of this because it is still fit for for the animals okay yes so n not all of it is for human consumption yeah okay yeah so uh, what's the procedure of handling the condemned meat or the carcass yes the procedure of handling the condemned meat is actually is supposed to be disposed of appropriately mm -hmm. and uh, if you go to uh, a slaughterhouse and this is a facility that should be there uh, there is uh, disposal pits, yeah, and uh, this meat is supposed to be disposed of, and there should be uh, a confirmation or assurance that nobody will go in there again and remove the, the carcasses. Okay. So there is some level of also, you know, um, uh, putting in some chemicals, and also the condemnation uh, pits are supposed to be sealed. They are not supposed to be left open so that anybody can go in there, even animals. So mm. th those, those uh, pits are supposed to, they, they, they are really uh, are very, very important and they're supposed to be protected okay. uh, so that uh, uh, nothing gets out of a condemnation pit. Okay. Yes, please. Kenyans love their meat. And yes, And yes. I know most of the time when we meet, we always have either nyamachoma, we slaughter, but the ones we slaughter at our homes, most of the time it's not in, in, in inspected. What can you advise uh, us as Kenyans? What do we need to look at when we are even buying an animal to, to go home and slaughter and enjoy with our families? Uh, what I would say is, you know, the art of meat inspection is a professional one. Mm -hmm. And not any, everybody can inspect meat. In fact, not everybody should inspect meat. Uh, because really, uh, even if I was to tell you what to look for, I would actually be, no, uh, I would be not very professional myself by telling the general public what necessarily to look for. We always advise, get a meat inspector, because they are not difficult to get. Mm -hmm. First of all, when you buy the animal, I mean, okay, maybe your aesthetics are important, an animal that is not emaciated, an animal that does not look sick anyway, yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, 
but after slaughter or even before slaughter, it is good to speak to the professional. Yeah? Let them look at the animal, okay? Yeah, it's okay, that is anti-mortem inspection. Let them uh, slaughter and let the meat inspector. It is not difficult to find meat inspectors, even in, even around our homes. Mm -hmm. They are there. Okay. Because you will get retired ones, you will get those that are working already, but they are around and about us. Uh, now, very recently also, we have been uh, training uh, private meat inspectors, mm. those who sponsor this themselves for the course, they are not necessarily employed by the government or by the counties for that matter, but they are there, they are trained, and they have their certificates, and they can also be uh, licensed to, to inspect meat. Okay. So they are there, they are around and about us, okay. and they can easily be found. Oh, yeah. let, yes. let me, let's, let's face uh, on that a, a little bit. Also remember some time back, there were these old men in the village. When we slaughter, they used to be called around. And I don't think they had any formal education. And they'll come, they check the liver. I used to stand there and just see what they were doing. And I could not really understand what they were doing. But at the end of the day, most of the time, they'll say the meat uh, was safe to eat. Uh, are there things that someone can learn on their own with time to know uh, when, I'm, when, when meat is safe? Uh, as I have said, actually meat inspection is a highly specialized profession mm -hmm. uh, because we are talking about somebody who has not begun with inspecting but has begun with animal health. So the animal health aspect of okay. it is very, very important okay. uh, because uh, for, for an animal health uh, person, they will look at an animal antimortem or even postmortem and they can tell you, for example, if a family had slaughtered, for example, a diseased animal, by what they see, you know, some too much redness, some level of bleeding in some areas and that kind of thing, mm -hmm. they, they will tell you this is a diseased animal. Well, we always have those um, uh, traditional experts, uh, but they don't know everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I, would, I would still insist that uh, we still go for those who are formally trained to inspect meat so that we don't miss anything. Okay. You know, some of the descriptions they give of how to inspect uh, carcasses or how to inspect even some of the organs, mm -hmm. uh, I have heard those stories uh, or myself also, and uh, when I think about them, I, I, I just uh, say they are meats. <laughs> <laughs> because I also remember there is another one I saw yeah. where these old men were sitting and looking at the intestine of the animal and they were telling the community it's going to rain. So I was, as a young man, I was left there confused. Yeah. How do you tell it's about rain by mm -hmm. looking at animals' intestine? So those are things that I've never been able to really add up and get an answer. That's right. So, um, so let's say now meat has been inspected. Tell us about the handling now from there now, um, from the slaughterhouse to the butcher or to my plate. Um, from, okay, now you have the, so what we would call raw meat. Yes. You know, it's just meat eh? and it has been uh, inspected and now it's ready for uh, either if it is at home, it's ready for cooking, cooking and yes. that kind of thing. Uh, so the handling of the meat, how is it, the cutting, uh, uh, the, the, the cutting should be in a way that you do not have the bone splinters all over the meat. Uh, if not all the meat is, is cooked at that moment, mm -hmm. uh, there are very many good ways of preserving the meat and uh, some of them are just natural. By the simple act of hoisting the meat, yeah? Mm -hmm. Already somehow because it creates the flow of fluids in the meat, out of the meat, it's, it's kind of is a, it's a preservation method in its, on its own, oh. the hoisting. And the hoisting also has some tenderizing properties. Right. Okay, what we call conditioning also. You know, the meat is conditioned. It is in a better state when it is hoisted than when 
lying it was just table. lying on the table or on the ground or something like that. Okay. Uh, so that, that is uh, at home. Now, when you have the slaughterhouse, first of all, even at inspection, the meat is already hoisted, okay? Yes. And then it is, of course, cut into the various uh, whatever, uh, uh, split. Sometimes it's cut again in, in, in two quarters, and then it is transported. First of all, the people slaughtering the, the, the animals must have what we call protective clothing. This is why when you go to the slaughterhouse, you find them in the white coats or white overalls, you find them with gum boots, you find them with the, the hats and all that. They are protecting the meat. They are not protecting themselves. Oh. They are protecting the meat. From contamination. From contamination. You know, they may even have the masks. Eh? Again, protection. And then the carcasses are put in uh, meat transporters. You have seen the box or the vehicles that transport the meat. In some cases, it's refrigerated. In other cases, it's just a box. But if you look at the boxes, if you look at the vehicles, they are clearly uh, like you have the white box with the red uh, whatever band around it, and you have it written meat. Mm. Yeah, Because anybody should be able to see that you're transporting meat. Okay, mm. And that way it makes it easier also for the regulators to actually check this vehicle, is it really carrying meat? Is it carrying, you know, meat Other correct? Things. You know, all sorts of things. So th th that is very important. Okay. Now, the, the transfer of the meat from the slaughter area to the vehicle also should be uh, in, a, in a hygienic way. Yeah? It should be in a hygienic way. It shouldn't be that, again, you have now removed your protective clothing and then you put there the carcass on your and back your shoulder and, and, you, and your shoulder and whatever with your street clothes. That's, again, not, not allowed. Okay. okay. So then uh, this is just transportation. But the meat now gets to the butcheries it is, uh, uh, and so on and so forth, the point of sale. Okay. okay. Uh, now, then from there... Let's, um, let, let's just take, take a commercial break. And then yes. when we come, yeah. we'll pick it from when the meat gets to the point of sale. The point of sale. Yes. Okay. So um, for our viewers back at home, we are taking a short commercial break, but we will be back shortly. Today we are talking about meat handling and safety. We'll be back in a few. <laughs> 